Right, so I'm Fred Craig from the, I'm an MA at the University of Manchester, and this is Worlds.net, the digital ruins of an online chat room. And uh, before I get into it, I suppose I'd just like to give a little bit of an introduction uh, to how I came to Worlds and uh, how I came to digital archaeology. So I wouldn't consider myself really to be a digital archaeologist. My background is in prehistory and I, my main research area is human-animal relationships. So uh, a little bit outside of my comfort zone. But Worlds is something which I knew about before my formal education in archaeology. Um, I probably came across it in about 2012 or something like that. Um, and it's something that after learning really in the last year about digital archaeology through people like uh, Andrew Reinhardt's Archaeogaming blog and such, uh, that I've come back to it and thought about it with a bit more of an archaeological perspective and I think that there's something of a great worth in worlds and some interesting things going on. And I'd like to show you some of those interesting things and I'd like to make people, make people think that this is a, a worthwhile area of study for digital archaeologists. Uh, so, oh, that was the slide I meant to have there. Um, but before we really talk about the interesting stuff, I suppose I should tell you exactly what it is. Um, and so in the company's own words, we've got here, Worlds is the pioneering platform in 3D virtual communities and rich immersive environments. It's all a lovely example of uh, kind of late 90s corporate jargon speak that I'll leave you to read in your own time. Uh, but essentially, what we're talking about here is uh, it's a 3D online chat room. It's kind of got like a Doom-like graphic in interface uh, that kind of has about, came about in 1994, but it's based on earlier work through the Steven Spielberg Starbright Foundation, which was a 3D virtual community made uh, for sick children in hospitals. Um, it's a precursor to much more well-known examples, such as uh, Second Life. Um, but what's really remarkable about it is that it's still running to this day in pretty much its original form, despite losing the vast majority of its user base. Uh, and, you know, we're talking like now, you know, it, it, 15 years ago. And the servers are all still running. Um, so it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a anachronism, I suppose. Uh, the way it functions is you have a core kind of area of uh, company-built worlds that then spiral out into user-created content, um, which is, yeah, it's a very large kind of network. Um, so you arrive in an area known as Ground Zero, and uh, this is a picture of it with a couple of users. Uh, you can see what I mean about the kind of the Doom era graphics. Um, and this is the area from which you kind of access all the default company worlds by kind of walking around and going through doors, uh, or you can use a teleportation map. Um, you have to have specific kind of world marks, which are like URLs, which let you open up the, uh, the user-created world. So you have to kind of have keys for those ones. Um, but each kind of world requires a separate download before you can access it because of the technological limitations at the time. And you have to restart the whole game. So you would kind of like acquire worlds and have to download stuff and restart as you move about through the space. Um, so. Some of the worlds are quite normal. So here's a garden world that you can socialize in, and a nightclub. Uh, but some of them are themed by topic. So here we have the music chat rooms uh, with the metal room, the jazz room, and the country room. <laughs> some of them are based on real world uh, locations. So here's a representation of the New York Yankees Stadium. Uh, but some of them are a little bit more bizarre. Have you ever felt like socialising atop an asteroid in space? Perhaps a series of walkways and cubes floating above an endless void. Um, the Bowie world in particular, made by David Bowie, is quite strange. So you've got these kind of nightmarish, uh, claustrophobic city streets that then go into a demonic temple uh, and finally, you end up in a rooftop garden filled with hands. And when you press in them, they float off into the sky. And that's all just one world. Uh, and this is the default company areas. And there are also hidden little secrets within these worlds. So, for example, 
It's a bad picture, but um, essentially there's a series... Oh, you can't see it at all, can you? Um, it's a series of kind of red tunnels that have a kind of flesh-like quality to them. But they're all hidden underneath a world that looks like a fraternity house. Similarly, you have here a maze of red-eyed flamingos that's behind a mirror in one of the kind of uh, rooms that's themed by emotional kind of experience. So this was in, inside the, I think it's called the chills room. Uh, and when you get to the centre of this maze, there's a minotaur. And when you activate the minotaur, its sound effect will repeat continuously throughout your game until you shut it off and restart the whole thing. So, even from its first creation, Worlds was a little bit strange. And these are just, again, these are the default areas. When you go off into the user-created content, that's where things get really weird. So there's always been an element of the gothic macabre and kind of uh, the, I suppose, the fear that we associate almost with ruins. Um, it's always been there in worlds. Uh, but just because it feels like a ruin, does that make something a ruin? No. Equally, as I've said before, uh, the area is it's really abandoned. Uh, at one point, it was down to about 20 regular users. Um, I've never met, well, I've, I can count on one hand the number of times I've met someone outside of that first area that I showed you. But just because it's abandoned and it feels like a ruin, that doesn't necessarily make something a ruin either. So, now's a good time to talk about authenticity and what makes a ruin a ruin. So, the, the root of what a ruin truly is, is it the idea of process. It's the state of disintegration or being destroyed. The Latin ruina is, it's not a, uh, it doesn't refer to a physical thing, it refers to an event. And it's sort of this kind of thing that I think really defines ruins, um, is that they are the result of a process of decay and disintegration. It requires time, it requires entropy for a ruin to truly form. They're a very, they have this emergent quality to them. But when we talk about digital ruins, and most of the literature about digital ruins, doesn't actually function in this way at all. What we're normally talking about are representations of digital ruins. So here we have an example from the Elder Scrolls series, um, some Aelid ruins from Oblivion, very nice. But they were created to make this. There was never a complete building there which has been destroyed through the course of the game, or that has decayed over the course of the hours that you play. It was designed this way, it has always been this way. Um, and so, really, what we, when we normally talk about digital ruins, what they have more in common with are these. Ooh, nope. The landscape follies um, you know, of, of gardening and um, of palaces. So here's the Roman ruins of Schrombach Palace, not actual Roman ruins. Fakes. Um, so digital ruins are really digital follies. But can we even have a process of decay and disintegration taking place in a digital space? Surely, if uh, the coding is not being changed, then these places should remain the same. Um, data does disappear, uh, as archaeologists I'm sure are all aware of that, but it's generally conceived as something a very all or nothing situation. Uh, everything is there, fixed, you know, immutable, permanent, until suddenly it's not. The servers go down, the plug gets pulled, and the screens go black. Certainly, this is the case of what happened to other online virtual spaces. But Worlds is different. It's been around now for getting on near 25 years. Uh, and it, in such, it's lasted a lot longer than many things on the internet do. And it has decayed in its own fashion over time. Um, this is because of both of the technological limitations of when it was created, but also because of its fundamentally its networked quality and the fact that it is a network of worlds. And I think that this decay qualifies it as a digital ruin, a true digital ruin, an authentic digital ruin. So how is it decayed and in what sense is it a ruin? Well, as I've said, it's a network of digital chat rooms. Here you can see all of the default worlds as they appear on the teleportation map. Um, so 
what it means is that these are these are the, the company worlds, but there are there's still about two hundred extant user created worlds ish that we know of. There would have been many, many more at one point. Those have all been lost. We either don't have the keys for them anymore, or the servers that hosted them are just gone. Um, and so, in many ways, you can think of worlds as a giant, sprawling country house in which rooms have collapsed in, annexes have disappeared, some of them might be blocked off by rubble. But it's not just at kind of this macro level that you can see this network decaying. It extends down into individual chat rooms as well. So what you're looking at here is what's known as uh, the DNC world. Uh, wait, no, DNC. DCN world, sorry. Um, part of the digital club network, a series of clubs located solely in cyberspace. And as you can see, there's something slightly wrong with this photo in that those screens at the back are displaying error messages. <laughs> Again, this is because they're trying to link through to an external site which no longer exists. Um, the digital club network no longer exists at all, apart from, for, as far as I know, this one representation preserved in worlds. Oh, really? Um, so I like to think of these as kind of worlds' version of million windows. These kind of empty spaces which rupture an internal space and create this kind of contrast between the present and the absent and reveals the underlying kind of... Uh, well, in, in the Windows case, the world outside, and in Worlds case, the underlying internet architecture. Um, and it's not just for DNC. Worlds is listed with jukeboxes that no longer play, and um, you know boards that try and link you through to articles which don't no longer exist. Um, I wasn't going to how we can date Worlds from these, but I won't bother. Um, so yeah, that's how Worlds is a ruin. It's all of this this infrastructure. Uh, and you know the architecture of this network has fallen apart because some of it has been preserved and some of it hasn't. Um, and so this is because of very much of it was constrained by the technology of when it was created. Uh, we're talking, you know, the early '90s. Um, it's, you know, here it says to, to download one world, it might take you up to 11 minutes. And bear in mind, there would have been thousands of these at one point. So by spreading out these downloads over different worlds and by putting in third-party uh, content that you would access kind of through your browser instead of through the chat client, you could mitigate these really punishing downloads. But obviously the result of this is when you spread everything out like that, over the course of its lifetime, some of it has survived and a lot of it hasn't. And this kind of creates that contradiction between the present and the absent, which makes worlds a ruin. Uh, but it's not just like this that we can think about ruins. As much as I was dismissing um, Folly's earlier is not true ruins, ruins are a, a place for social performance. They're something that we associate social actions with. And Worlds has this in spades too, has ghost stories. So there's a persistent rumor that um, Worlds is an online kind of uh, recruiting ground for a satanic cult. Perhaps not surprising considering some of the content, but again, it's the materiality or the immateriality of this space that's reflecting into kind of folklore and legend about it. It also we also associate ruins with memory memorial, and again, uh, you could see worlds as being a memorial to a particular time of the internet. Uh, that's certainly why a lot of people recently have become attracted to it again. Uh, but there's more specific examples. So the Bowie world was featuring a number of kind of of articles reflecting on Bowie's death and his role kind of in the early internet. He actually owned an internet service provider at one point. Um, but there's a particular world which I think which has a really striking memorial where it takes one texture from the base game and has since turned it into something incredibly powerful. It's called the YTC room, and it's one of the stranger and more beautiful places I think that I've ever been in. As well as this, Worlds has archaeologists. So people study it as if it is a ruin. Uh, so it emerged kind of out of actually 4chan boards and Reddit, um, but it's a group of 300 community uh, archaeologists which have spent a lot of their time documenting, archiving, and have since actually backed up all the worlds that they can to kind of stop this decay. They're doing the things that archaeologists do. They're recording, preserving, and furthering our knowledge about this. And they're all completely self-taught. Uh, they're all 
they're um, migrating everything over right now into a comprehensive archive that can be accessed by anyone, so that people can uh, can, can view and can make get, take their way around this chat room without having to go through everything that they went through to find these places. Uh, and so I'd like to conclude with the I hope I've changed uh, perhaps your idea of what digital ruins are um, and made the case for worlds being a true digital ruin. Um, I also would like to quickly thank all of those in the world's community who've gone before me, and I'll leave them with the last words on it. When you walk around the once crowded spaces, you walk into a space that some called their hobby, some their after work hangout, and others home. This is a reoccurring theme amongst most of the worlds. World chat client is a virtual ruin. When you step into worlds, you step into a beautiful, nostalgia-ridden river.